So in today's video, we are talking about a particular aspect of diverticulitis and diverticular disease, and we're talking about the complications of diverticular disease. Welcome to the channel where we discuss medical topics and lifestyle, and let's dive right in. So first thing is first, we need to get over some definitions. So what is diverticular disease in particular? Diverticular disease is a condition that affects the large intestine, and it is where many diverticulate form in the large intestine, primarily the latter parts, so the descending colon, the sigmoid colon, and the rectum. So that's where diverticular disease primarily takes hold, and they are pouches that protrude out and cause trouble to the individual who has them. There's a number of reasons for it and theories for it, one of them being increased luminal pressure, another can be a weakness of the colon wall itself forming this pouch that you see illustrated here in the diagram, and it's very much so associated with a low fiber diet. So historically, the older individual is going to get this, but it is affecting the younger population more and more as well. For more discussions about causes and things like that, check out the other videos on diverticular disease. So what is the first complication of diverticular disease? So what happens when one of these pouches become inflamed? What happens when they start to cause trouble? You get something called diverticulitis. So diverticulitis is an inflammation of one of these diverticula, one of these pouches. So they get inflamed and then they cause symptoms to occur, such as left lower quadrant pain, fever, and blood in the stool. Sometimes it's actually referred to as left-sided appendicitis because that's the presentation it makes. The appendix is on the right, diverticulitis, because that's the area of the colon that's affected. It happens on the left. So that is the first complication of diverticular disease. And that is quite an acute presentation. But what happens when this just niggles on? So there, we can have chronic diverticulitis that is occurring. So that is something that's a little bit more subtle, but it causes trouble to us anyway. So that presents itself as an altered bowel habit. So the bowels are changed. You can have an abdominal pain, once again, focused around the left side. So a colicky left-sided pain. You can develop nausea. So nausea is a prominent feature as well in addition to getting flatulence, so passing of gas. And these symptoms, they are quite often resolved or improved by defecation. So that we're not talking about an acute diverticular flare, but we're talking about chronic diverticulitis as a complication. We need to refer this if it's severe, and we need to investigate it appropriately. So that's the most important thing, and you're going to see a trending theme in the video where we need to investigate these things. Another complication is hemorrhaging from a diverticulum. I know we had bleeding from an acute diverticulitis attack, but this is hemorrhaging from a diverticulum. It's a common cause of rectal bleed. It's usually sudden and painless. And this actually means that we need to get seen quite urgently. If bleeding is not settling down, if it's just not a little bit of blood, but if it's quite a bit of blood, it's an emergency and we need admitting and we need to be assessed for this properly. So these are complications of diverticular disease. Now let's move on. So we have hemorrhaging and chronic diverticulitis. Now we have something called a diverticular abscess that can form. So we need to focus on the pouches we were mentioning. What is an abscess? An abscess is when one of these pouches becomes very, very swollen and inflamed and it starts to accumulate pus. That is what an abscess is. It doesn't just have to be a diverticulate, it can happen anywhere else in the body. It presents with a swinging fever, general malaise, other localizing symptoms such as pelvic pains. Again, that's the location of it. And this is something that needs to be referred urgently for surgical assessment. Again, this might be a consideration for having surgery or not, but that is something that needs to be referred. Then we can develop something called a post-infective stricture. So that is fibrous tissue formation following an infection. So similar to a scar that develops, fibrous tissue develops and it forms a narrowing of the colon and this then causes obstruction. Obstruction, hallmarks of it are not passing gas, not passing stool, vomiting, abdominal pain and bloating and these are really really troublesome signs that need to be addressed. So those are the signs of obstruction. So we're listing the complications now and now let's move on to the next one. The next complication that we're going to talk about is a perforated diverticulum. This is very worrisome. It is a hole that is made essentially, so it's secondary to inflammation. And when one of these diverticulum essentially pops, 
they, there's a loss of the intestinal wall integrity, necrosis, meaning dying of the tissue, it pops, and that's a problem because you basically have a hole in your bowel. And that presents with ileus, peritonitis, shock, and you really need to get yourself to the hospital then, and you'll really know that this is happening and it needs the surgery, essentially. Then you can develop a fistula. And what is a fistula? So think of a fistula like a bridge or rather a connection between two things. So a fistula may form if a diverticulum perforates, so it pops into something else. What would it pop into? Well, there are organs close to the bowels, and we'll talk about it in a sec, but it is, it's essentially an abnormal communication between one organ and another. And the organs that are close by are the bladder, the vagina, and also another organ that we don't think about that's close by is the overlying skin. So these are the three general places where a fistula would form from a diverticulate perforation and how it presents would be with air or feculent material in the urine if it's into the bladder. The same thing goes for the vagina. So you would get it in the vagina, basically a leaking there. And also if we're talking about the skin, you can have fecal discharge through a wound, for example, or something like that. So that is what a fistula is. It's not nice to look at. It's not nice to see, but that's another complication of diverticular disease. So we listed the complications of diverticular disease, and the common trend is that a lot of them need attention, a lot of them need admission or surgical review. We mentioned how the diverticular disease, what parts of the colon it affects. We mentioned some of the terms, such as what a fistula is, what a stricture is. I hope you learned something. If you want more information on diverticular disease, the management, the causes, the lifestyle around it, the diet, please make sure to check out our other videos. Like and subscribe for more. We'll see you in the next one.